So how would we solve this problem? We are given the percentages of each of the elements. We need to find grams. That's easy to do. We will assume 100 grams. And when we do that, the percentages simply become grams. For example, 38.7 grams of carbon is what we now have, 9.7 grams of hydrogen, and 51.6 grams of oxygen. The very next thing that we have to do, of course, is to change the grams to moles. And we can do that by using molar mass from the periodic table. It's always the grams in one mole. Now, when we're using the molar mass from the periodic table in these problems, we want to take as many sig figs as we can so as to reduce the rounding error. So here we have changed them all to moles. The next thing that we need to do is to divide by the smallest mole. So in this case, we would see that the moles of carbon is the smallest mole. So we would divide each of these by 3.222. Doing that, this is what we find. So for carbon, we have one. For hydrogen, we have 2.99, which rounds to three. Now in this case, we can round to three because we are within the one-tenth difference between 2.99 and three, so it's okay to round here. And then the last one for oxygen would be one. So there we have it. Our empirical formula is now CH3O which is great. We are at the empirical formula. However, we need to go another step to find the molecular formula for this compound. And we can do that by multiplying the empirical formula by a factor. So how do we get the factor? We remember that the factor is equal to the molecular molar mass divided by the empirical molar mass. The molecular molar mass was given to us in the problem will usually be given to you in the problem the empirical molar mass is what you need to find, which is easy enough because we know what the empirical formula is. So going to the periodic table, adding that up, we find that the empirical formula molar mass is 31.034 grams per mole. So putting all this information into our equation, we find that the factor is now two. Once we have the factor, we would multiply that by the empirical formula to determine the molecular formula. So we would take our empirical formula and multiply all of the subscripts by two, which is the factor, and that will give us the molecular formula. So doing that, we see that our molecular formula is C2H6O2.